Scientists like to classify living things. So an activity that we're going to do today is we're going to go out into the garden at Thalgara and we're going to catch some invertebrates. To help us with that catching, I've invited a special guest along today. Let's go and meet Dr. Kirsty Abbott from the University of New England. Her speciality is studying insects. As an entomologist, I love observing and catching insects and understanding more about them. At the moment in autumn, around, particularly around the New England, but all over the place in Australia, there are some amazing flying insects around. And you'll notice that behind me, now, there's a flowering rosemary bush. Actually, rosemary is one of the best plants to observe and catch insects on all year round because rosemary flowers in winter and it starts now in autumn, as you can see. And even without doing anything, just observing the diversity of insects on the rosemary, I can see butterflies. You can also see bees, there's European honeybees. There's flies that have just landed on my finger. And the longer I look, the more I find. I've just spotted some adult lady beetles. I can also see ants. Ants are small and they get right in the tiny nooks and crannies of the small leaves on the plants. The best thing about understanding the diversity of insects is that they're right outside our back door. We don't have to travel to find them. We don't have to chase them up a mountain. They are right there. And even better, we don't have to kill any of them either. And we've got equipment in our own homes to be able to at least keep them enclosed for a while, watch them and then release them so nothing has to die. So there's a butterfly in front of me and I'm going to put the container in one hand and the lid in the other. And I'm literally just going to try and put the butterfly plant and all in the container. Fast. We did it. It's got some food, it's got air, and a butterfly in a container like this with food and air, and would have to put some water in there, could possibly survive anywhere between three and five days. In here is a ladybug, lady beetle, I should say. So I'm going to very gently brush the lady beetle into my container. We've just made an insect net out of a reusable fruit and veggie bag, which is made of mesh or tulle. We can cut up a tutu and some wire that we've just folded it over the edge and have a little handle on the wire. And then we can catch flying insects. Let's give it a go. With a big net, it's easier to catch them because you've got a much bigger hole. So this is just for small things. In fact, it's probably ideal for honeybees where you don't want to go near them with your hands. And we've got a honeybee over here. Yes! No! <laughs> Where'd that bee go? Got it. So in our mesh net, we have a honeybee that we can observe in there. And we can let her go. Simply open it and let her fly away. <laughs> a camouflaged grasshopper. It's moving, it's preparing to jump, so I'm going to... Did I miss it? <laughs> oh, I got it. <laughs> On there. <laughs> you could encourage it to jump to the top of your net Come on. Woo! You could put it in a container like this. So there you've been able to trap it in something that is a little bit easier to observe your grasshopper. The more you look, the more you find. 
A really good place to find insects around your backyard and around the neighbourhood is along gutters or edges of concrete. The concrete remains really warm so insects that are cold blooded can use that warmth actually to remain active. Ants can be lazy sometimes and they like a bit of a highway and you can see here that there's a few different species of ants. You can even see this ant carrying some food back to the nest or moving something. Oh this is exciting. Under here we have an ant colony very busy moving pupae and eggs and larvae. It's important that we don't disrupt their colony but we certainly can have a really good look at the different life stages of ants in there. Ooh, We've got another ant colony and this time it's a fedoli. You can see the big headed soldiers All right, this is something that does not have six legs, but is an invertebrate, a centipede. One important thing to remember though, is centipedes bite. Oh, here it is, here it is, here it is. The baby ladybug beetle. Here we found a juvenile lady beetle. So this is another baby it's actually a baby beetle and the reason we know it's a baby beetle is because it's got these six little legs up the top here. Oh look there's a cockroach, that's a goodie. Got him! So here we've got a cockroach. Lots of people don't really, people don't really want to touch cockroaches but they're harmless. Often there's things just under bark on tree trunks or running up trees to try and find food in the top of the tree. So if you just gently pull bits of bark off, just small bits. <laughs> Witchity grub. So here are two great things. This is termites in here that have made a little channel. They're, they're wood eating. Termites are not insects actually. But in here, we have another beetle larvae. So this is a juvenile, probably scarab beetle or carabidae beetle. And again, you can see it's chewing mouth parts and it's six legs. And then undergo metamorphosis to become a big beetle. Oh, and it's just pooed on me. Poo. <laughs> this one is different from a centipede in that it will not bite me and it has two pairs of legs per segment. 